Welcome back to Fire to Fork. I found a cave, so I thought I'd cook some lunch in it. Well, it's actually quite late because, well, I'll explain that later. But first, let's get the firewood off the roof, get things set up a little bit. Yep, water for Fred, don't worry. There you go, buddy. Good boy. I'm, as you can see, the, it's all kind of uneven, so I just want to lift the whole bum of the car up. So it's the good thing about having airbags. Sort of level it out. Yeah, looks good to me. <sighs> Much better. Um, now, uh, before this starts, I want to say something, and that is that um, I, I'm going to make a conceited effort uh, going forward to actually talk less about my gear because I find I ramble too much about it. Uh, there is a link down below to the gear section of my website. If you want to know what gear I'm using, my awning, my pots, my pans, my anything you like, just go to that link uh, and it'll have a guide to it. Otherwise, I'm answering questions constantly and I just talk way too much about gear and not enough about what we're all here to do, and that is cook. So, speaking of cooking, a pile of wood is not much use to me, so I'm going to get some kindling and light a little fire. You are no doubt curious by now why I've given this, this video this clickbait title of whatever I have decided what I'm going to call it yet. But it happened. Fire to free beer actually freaking happened. I didn't pay for these. You guys did. And what I mean by that is you all hounded Colonial on, on Instagram, on Facebook, on everything. And you got them to send me free beer, which is, I mean, I, could, I feel like I could close the channel down now. So this is like everything I've ever wanted, a free beer sponsor. So thank you so much for everyone who helped out. Thank you so much to Colonial for getting on board. Now they're not like a paid full on, you know, sponsor. They just sent me some beer and that, as far as I'm concerned, is a total win. I'm going to protect said beer in Sam's stubby holder again gear page Ugh. don't worry this is not going to become some super product placementy thing just because I have a company that sends me free beer but I do like to show my appreciation so thank you very much Colonial uh, they genuinely are my favorite beer I actually since started doing this fire to free beer thing had about five or six different companies approach me and actually say like you know breweries and stuff hey would you like it I held out for Colonial because they were the one that with all the money and stuff aside, they were the ones that I really wanted to, to get on board with. They're actually a WA owned company. Sorry, an Australian owned company. I think the owner lives in Melbourne. Um, but one of the very last Australian breweries. So thank you so much to Colonial. Mother's milk. I'll let that die down. I might go and get a chair and chill out. What an idiot. I just splashed my own fire and put it out. In this video, I'm going to introduce three new products without talking about them. One number one. All right, so today we're going to be talking about beer snacks and there are a whole bunch of different beer snacks. You can do jalapeno poppers, you can just have jerky, you can have peanuts, but this one I think is a little bit of a special one. Um, so today we are going to be making basically a cheeseburger quesadilla. Uh, I'm going to call them fire wraps because it kind of makes more sense to me uh, because I'm not sort of sullying the name of a quesadilla with, by putting cheeseburger ingredients into it. And it's like a non-Mexican quesadilla. Still smells good to me. Uh, that is my beef. Um, now my beef is not just beef actually, it's a combination of pork and beef mince. Uh, it's an 80-20, uh, sorry, 75-25 mix, which is probably on the fatty side. 
yeah, that's been in the fridge for about, now the reason I'm smelling it is because it's been in the fridge for about two weeks without me touching it uh, and it smells actually totally fine. So I'm just making sure, but I hadn't actually checked it before I left. Either that or I'll, you know, be ruined tonight. So what I'm doing there is kind of smashing it out a little bit and then dropping it into my pan to quickly fry up as sort of like a big, a bigger patty. Sort of like a smash burger style, because you want this quite thin. Oh, also when you get your mince done, I always order my own mince from the butcher. Uh, if you can get a pork and, pork and beef mix, that's fantastic. So you use lean beef and pork fat. Uh, sometimes there's like a minimum order, so we had to order five kilos, which has done us for months and months and months. Um, make sure you get them to do the coarsest grind possible and an 80-20 mix. They'll know what that means. Uh, with pork fat and beef lean. Useful little trick. Um, I just stab my things into the sand. It gives it a nice little bit of abrasion uh, before I rinse them off. Saves having to get your scrubber out and dirty it and whatnot. And um, for 99% of things, it's uh, totally fine. And if you're low on water, even better, do that. Rinse it off with uh, salt water and then give it a final rinse. So you actually get it all clean with salt water and then give it a final rinse with fresh water. One thing that really annoys me about my setup so far, because I, I haven't finished, uh, is I don't have a bin bag on my tire. It's really annoying me. I need to relocate that camera. I've got my bin bag ready to go. I just haven't put the bloody thing on. I'll give that a bit of a smash down. It doesn't actually need to stay together that well. Now with burgers, you actually only need to salt one side. So I'm gonna salt and pepper that side. But don't salt it too much. The other ingredients are very salty in this. Ah, the handle is hot. Metal tables is where I use them. I put hot stuff on them. Start the assembly. So, you get your mince, or ground beef as they call it in America. I don't know why, it's so weird how different countries that still speak English have such different names for things. It's fun. Okay, now for this you need to use dirty burger cheese. That is heavily processed. American style cheese. I use Dairy Lee burger slices. Uh, they seem to be the most readily available dirty American y cheese. Actually, there are some steps first. Now, this is all seems backwards compared to a normal burger, and a, there are some, some weird stages to this as well. I've put my chopped onion in the freezer. This is totally unnecessary for most of the time it's just that i only had bugger all of an onion i had like a, this kind of knackered onion left um at home so i just got what i could out of the middle of it <laughs> it was like all brown on the outside so i just grabbed a few bits and then i chucked them in the fr chucked the bits in the freezer because you actually want the onion to be raw so because we're going to be cooking this wrap i decided to do that so that they kind of resist the cooking to an extent yeah a bit weird but Definitely unnecessary, but I just thought I'd give it a crack. I like the experimentation. Next, pickles. Uh, I use these cheap Fellbergs special burger pickles. They seem to be the ones that taste most like a sort of a Macca's pickle. They're like $2.50 or something from, I think, I think Woolies, Woolworths. Um, almost certain it was Woolworths I got them from. I try not to buy ingredients that you have to shop in Narnia to get. Um, geez, you get some crap in some cookbooks these days that, um, you know, people are like, oh, well, you know, I've got my activated bloody, I don't know, tomato sauce with a charcoal and, you know, like just, people like to add a lot of wank to recipes and I'm not a fan of that. I like to um, make sure that I can get everything in, all my ingredients in like, Easy to, easy to reach places, local butcher, supermarkets, 
um, you know, maybe, maybe a little Asian shop for like some sauces, but generally I try and get 99% from my supermarket. French's yellow mustard, that is cheap, dirty American mustard. Sauce, or ketchup. Tomato sauce apparently is different to ketchup, but I don't know how. I think that's tomato sauce, not ketchup, so it's probably wrong. Whatever, tastes good. It's what I had in the fridge. Well, cupboard. Don't actually put too much cheese on, otherwise it will be too salty and it'll actually just be too much. Um, it's, it gets, it's very easy to get this too cheesy and I never say that. So one thin kind of layer over everything, that's it. Uh, ordinarily actually, I, I should point out, ordinarily I would do this a whole, I'd cover that whole thing and I'd chuck another wrap on top. But it's only me um, and I don't want to waste any food because this tastes really good hot, so I want to eat it hot now. Sorry, it's new, it um, wasn't in there properly. Well, it was in there too well actually. It's like for storage, for transport or whatever. Okay, new product I'm not going to talk about, number three. Two, two. That's all I want to talk about, that I'm not going to talk about. And grill that. Pay some sort of attention, don't let it get black. That should take about five minutes of grilling. So you kind of want to adjust the heat um, to suit that, if that makes sense. So if after a minute it's already going black like that was, reduce the heat a bit so that it takes two and a half minutes each side. The reason for that is you want the internals to melt a bit. Not as much as like, oh, I should point out, uh, I usually do these in kind of a pizza style, if you like. So I would usually add, you know, uh, some cherry tomatoes, some cacciatore or chorizo or something like that, maybe some bacon um, with, you know, you can do whatever you want. You can make like a meat lovers one if you want, if you wanted. You can have like, um, you know, all different types of meat and then some barbecue sauce and um, just honestly just pizza ingredients. And then you just do it like this, but it's much, much easier, much, much quicker. So I'm a huge fan of these actually. They take no time at all. And um, yeah, they, you can get some really good ingredients. I have a video coming up very soon. I've been collaborating with Crashpad, uh, and they have a series of videos coming out. Um, uh, so you will see co me cooking some more of these and some other stuff on their channel very soon. So keep your eyes peeled for that. It's gonna be a really, really fun series. All right, I reckon that's done. Looks crispy. Right, I'm not talking about number three. That looks insane. Oh my god. Okay. Gratuitous B-roll done. Let's try this thing. This is a cheeseburger. Just a little tiny itty bitty cheeseburger. That is delicious. Mm. Freaking delightful. It just tastes like a cheeseburger. It's got the sweetness of the pickles. It's got the sweetness of the sauces. It's got that sort of, um, I don't know, that kick from the onion. Um, and then obviously the acidity from, from the pickles as well. Uh, and then just beautiful, you know, nicely done mince. Uh, and a little bit of crisp from the, from the bread. Um, it look, it's nowhere near as filling as a normal cheeseburger because it doesn't have that big thick bit of bread. But I quite like that. Um, now, question is, does it go well with beer? Yes, yes it does. Like it was ever a question of whether a cheeseburger went well with beer. I seriously can't stop eating those. It's 4.22 is the first thing I've eaten today. So, pretty hungry. All right, thank you so much for watching. Um, I probably won't be here next week because I'm gonna go home for Christmas and I'm gonna take a week off. So, after Christmas, New Year's sort of, you know, January, join me again. 
Uh, there'll be more episodes, there'll be more Prado stuff, probably not until Feb, but everything else will be as normal, uh, pretty much. Weather dependent. I couldn't film it all last week because it was bucketing with rain. All right, see you in the next one. Cheers. Oh, it's so good. I need another beer though.